you were born on the beach. Yes, ma'am, I was. And what was it like growing up on the beach? Well, I was born uh, in a place called St. Francis Hospital, which is now Aqua. It's a <laughs> development on 63rd Street. And uh, growing up on Miami Beach, it was very interesting. I mean, the median age when I was growing up was uh, 67. And I know this because when I later became mayor, the city had gotten so young, the median age was 37 by 2000 in the 2000s. So th it was dramatic changes. So the population here was senior citizens. Um, this area was a very, very Jewish area growing up here. Um, the area of South Beach that we have now was a lot of delis and bakeries and shoemakers and those little shops along Washington Avenue were all occupied. Ocean Drive uh, had a lot of senior residents over there. Obviously they were called porch sitters. They'd be out there uh, conversing and talking all the time. What was then, what is now South Point Park and also the developments down in South Point below Fifth Street, uh, there were some buildings down there I don't quite remember it that vividly, but I know we had a dog track down there, the Miami Beach Kennel Club. And um, where I grew up off 25th Street, where my mom still lives, uh, was a you know very nice neighborhood. Um, there were uh, the new Miami Beach High, or the Beach High that we're in now, which moved in the 60s, was there. The Hebrew Academy is there. The Par 3 Golf Course, which is now being made into a park, was there. It was a nice life growing up, actually. Um, Did you roam around much? Yeah, roamed around a lot. Not a lot of traffic problems, obviously. Uh, the the um, Not a lot of parking problems. Uh, people, uh, for young people, the park system was a great system for kids. Um, all the schools were really good. The... Um, the ho most of what we have as far as entertainment and restaurants and such was geared towards the hotels. There were obviously some out, but it wasn't like it is today in many ways. Um, as a kid growing up, I think it was, a, it was a really, really nice life. I was very, very blessed to be able and fortunate to be able to grow up in Miami Beach, no question. And you were aware of that. You were aware that you were growing up in what some people described as paradise. I think so. I, I, well, how much you're aware is a 10, 11, 12, 13 year old? I don't know, but I know that, you know, it was one of those things. You know, you had neighbors, you played with other kids, you had bikes, you know, you went to the park. Um, everything, you know, was, was basically a pretty, pretty nice lifestyle. But I guess if you talk to anybody who grew up in the 60s and early 70s, you know, that's probably in most places that were kind of smaller and, um, less intensity of development, it was a quieter life, I think. Uh, the, it was still a seasonal place, obviously. The, uh, what we have out here, Lincoln Road, is, was not the Lincoln Road of today. It had gone into decline in the 70s. Uh, and as far as activity here, there was not a lot of things going on. I remember you know, there were only one or two pizza places, for argument's sake, there were, that you didn't have anywhere near the urbanization of the city that we have today. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, what year and how old were you when your father became mayor? My dad was mayor in the late 60s. He got elected in 68 and served till 71. And uh, so that would have made me five, six years old at the time. And probably by the time... Uh, uh, he had run for Congress, uh, probably nine, ten, somewhere in there. He had run against Claude Pepper, uh, which was not such a good idea in retrospect. Uh, he thought uh, since he could beat a Roosevelt, he became mayor by defeating Elliot Roosevelt, who was the president's son, FDR's son, in 65. And I guess he thought if he could beat a Roosevelt, he could beat a Pepper, but that did not come to pass. And as I recall, I think... Uh, he got the most anyone ever got against him, and it was only 40%. So um, Pepper was an enormously popular congressman. I'm sure you remember him. Mm -hmm. um, probably he and Tip O'Neill at that time were the two most powerful congressmen in their district. He was the head of the Rules Committee. Uh, and, you know, that was basically uh, was 
that was the campaign of the day. Uh, after that, he continued to have a private uh, law practice. He worked on Lincoln Road right over here in the 420 building, um, was active in the anti-casino campaigns while mayor and then after mayor with Floridians Against Casino Takeover. Uh, Explain yes. why people were against that on Miami Beach. Uh, during his time in yes. the seven in, mm -hmm. in the seventies, there was a straw vote on it that was defeated. Well, I think that there was at that time there weren't a lot of models of casino gambling. You either had the Las Vegas model or the Atlantic City, and the argument was that we're we were probably closer to Atlantic City in that sense because we were along the water, the ocean front, and the idea was to start having these hotels with 500 rooms or more to begin to do that. You know, many of the arguments are the same as today. You would cannibalize whatever small businesses that were out there. Uh, you would change the entire character of the city. Of course, there were all the issues relating to organized crime and casinos that were even less regulated in those days than today. Um, it was, I don't believe it was a moral objection I think it was more as far as changing the character of the city. And uh, those referendums were defeated in Miami Beach in the straw ballot. They also were defeated statewide a number of times. Since that time, in the last, I guess it's about five, six years, uh, we've had uh, casino gambling at paramutuals, which were, you know, the racetracks, high life frontons, what used to be high life frontons, uh, dog tracks. And um, that has, I think, been more acceptable. I believe today, if you were even have a referendum on Miami Beach, the majority of people would vote against it because of that fact. The idea that we have a city now that's so diverse of small business that you just do not want to capture people within one particular freestanding or a number of freestanding casinos. Uh, the patronizing those other businesses, they'd start to tank. And that would not be healthy. Plus, remember in those days, the proponents would argue you could roll a bowling ball down Lincoln Road and not hit anyone. Because it was in such decline today, people start saying, I don't go to Lincoln Road, there's too many people there. You know, so it's a totally different dynamic that has occurred. Mm -hmm. So um, there was an awareness then of the scale and, and the uniqueness of Miami Beach. I believe so. There was always this tension, even back then, between the developer interest, um, the hotelier interest, as it was called more, and the residential interests. And both, obviously, there's a synergy as far as the economy of a city, but it was always, we don't want to get it so big and intrusive that our quality of life is going to suffer. I think that's been a theme throughout the history of Miami Beach, and it is today as well. It became more of an issue of development with these high-intensity condominiums that came later on after the 70s. Mm -hmm.